Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own viewfinder and I'm going to show you how I use it when I'm creating a drawing or painting. As you can see I've got this viewfinder here that I had made previously. You can certainly purchase a viewfinder. There are uh, pre-made manufactured viewfinders that you can use. A lot of them have adjustable size windows. Um, grids um, through the viewfinder window and they come in different sizes. Those are all great features and handy features, uh, but you don't necessarily have to buy one. You could also make one. You'll need a piece of mat board or something that has a little bit of rigidity and stiffness to it. In a pinch, paper will work, but it's a little flimsy. Cardboard is also an option. Cardboard typically has a corrugated core and when you cut into it, it gets kind of frayed and uh, jagged and can be kind of hard to get a straight edge on it. So I've got this scrap piece of mat board that I'm going to use. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife or something to cut it with, ruler, cutting board, and a pencil. So you can see my viewfinder, it's got a smaller window here and it's got a border around it here that I can use to hold on to it and view subjects. So when I'm, I'm drawing or painting something from direct observation, from life, you know, I've got a still life or something set up. If I look at it through this little viewfinder window, it's gonna help me compose my drawing or painting easier. It allows me to, to see the placement of my objects within this rectangle of the picture plane uh, a little easier. So this window represents the outer edges of my paper or my canvas, whatever substrate I'm drawing or painting on. The outer dimensions aren't as important as those window dimensions. You want the relationship between the short edge and the long edge of your rectangle to be the same relationship as between the short edge and long edge as the paper or the canvas that you're working on. This viewfinder that I constructed is made to match the proportions of an 18 inch by 24 inch sheet of paper. So it's a three to four relationship. You know, you could make this really easy and just to do a three inch by four inch window. This viewfinder is kind of small. You know, when I'm composing an image, I have to hold it pretty close to my face to fit everything in there well. So this viewfinder that I'm going to, to construct, show you how to make, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, but I do want to keep that same ratio, three to four. If you're working on a different sized sheet of paper or canvas, you'll need to adjust that size of that rectangle. For example, a 16 inch by 20 inch canvas is a common size. If you reduce that down, it reduces down to a four to five relationship. This viewfinder window is set to a three to four relationship between the short side and the long side. So it wouldn't work for 16 inch by 20 inch sheet of paper or canvas. I would need a different viewfinder window, a different size. With this makeshift one, you could also adjust the size uh, of the viewfinder window by placing a piece of tape I would need to measure it out, right? But I could cover up part of that viewfinder window with a piece of tape that effectively adjusts the size of my viewfinder window. Some of those uh, manufactured viewfinders have a little slider that, that adjusts the size or ratio proportion of the viewfinder window. So that's pretty handy. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is determine what size of the viewfinder window we want to create. And I want my viewfinder window to be, have that three to four uh, proportion ratio. Uh, but I do want it to be a bit bigger than this view, this old viewfinder I have here. Um, if I make a, another, a bigger one, it'll give me a little more versatility and more options with my viewfinder usage. Uh, I do want to give at least an inch or so border around my viewfinder window so that I can got room to hold it comfortably. 
Let's do a six inch by eight inch viewfinder window. Eight and three quarters minus six is two and three quarters. That leaves a border of one and three eighths. Now, as you can see on this one, uh, the border on these sides is a little bit thicker than the border on that side. It, that doesn't affect anything necessarily. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to make the border the same all the way around. So we'll go with adding two and three quarters inches to the wind viewfinder window length. So eight plus two and three quarters would give us a ten and three quarter inch width. Measure over ten and three quarters. I'm just going to extend this line out. Use a cutting mat underneath anytime you're cutting with things. Be careful with the X-Acto knife. The thicker material, I don't usually try to Cut it all the way through in one pass. We'll make multiple passes. I've got the outer window done. <clears throat> I'm going to measure out my ruler at six inch by eight inch viewfinder ruler. Inch and three eighths in. So mark inch and three eighths in this way and place a mark. Double check my measurements. Inch and three eighths in, place a mark. Inch and three eighths in from this side. Place a mark. And I'm gonna come in inch and three eighths from this side. Place a mark. Inch and three eighths from this side and place a mark. Double check to make sure that gives me eight, and it does. Now I can start to sketch in my viewfinder window here. Inch and three eighths. One inch and three eighths. As I mentioned earlier, this part, the, the inner window, is the important part. So you want to make sure that your measurements on this inner window are nice and precise. Use a ruler, double check your measurements. Make sure you've got a nice squared up rectangle for your viewfinder window. So now that I've got that six inch by eight inch window sketched out, I just gotta cut it out. Exacto knife. Again, this is the important window, so I want to make sure that my cuts are nice and precise, straight. out right away it means I didn't make the cuts totally all the way so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that they still stay precise and I'm gonna just tear them out and there you have it there's your viewfinder window from here what I would do just like I did with my small one might measure and place a mark halfway for four inch so it's our halfway point and these are important measurements that will come in handy when we're when we're planning out the composition for our, our drawing or painting halfway point on this side 
And then for our rule of thirds, I'm going to also place third marks. So two and five eighths, roughly. Two and five eighths. Now use a calculator if you have to. It makes it a little easier to, to get these measurements. Place those marks over here, too. Two sixteenths. Two eleven sixteenths. On these shorter edges, we've got six inches. We're dividing that into thirds. It's really easy. Two inches, two inches. Give us the marks for the thirds. Another thing you can do with these viewfinders, if you cut two of them out at the same size, um, you can, on the inside of one, you can cut out a small sheet of clear acetate and then mark off grid marks on that sheet of acetate. Sandwich that sheet in between the two and then you've got, you've got those marks delineated and gridded out on your viewfinder window on that clear sheet of acetate. That's what I used to have on this one, but that, that clear sheet started getting marked up and cloudy. So I took it apart, took that clear sheet of acetate out, but it did work for a while. So that's another option for your, your viewfinder. All right, so now that we know how to construct a viewfinder, I'm gonna go over a few tips about how to use it and show you how I use the viewfinder. So when I'm using the viewfinder um, at the beginning of the drawing here to kind of look at my subject through it, um, it can get kind of tricky, you know, you, you have to hold it in one hand and draw with the other. If your viewfinder's large window is large enough, you might be able to tape it, attach it to the side of your drawing board, and that way you don't necessarily have to hold it. Um, you can see here that my objects are, are filling out that picture plane. I need this viewfinder to be placed closer to my face uh, to fit all three objects in their entirety comfortably within that window. So with our viewfinder, uh, we can bring that in and view our subjects through the viewfinder to see how they are going to be placed within the rectangle of the picture plane, how they're going to relate to the edges of our paper or canvas. Uh, we can adjust size of the objects within the picture plane. All right, if we move the viewfinder toward us or away from us, adjust the sizes of the objects within the picture plane. How much of that background and foreground do we want to include? Uh, do we want to include that front edge of the, the table? Do we want our cropping to be vertical. Uh, perhaps a vertical orientation would work better. One thing to consider and think about is the, the distance from the edge of the picture plane right, to the outer contour of our object. If we make those outer contours come too close to the edge of the picture plane or sitting right on the edge of the picture plane, it can make our subjects feel cramped or crowded within that box of the picture plane. Uh, could also run into issues as we develop the painting or drawing with room, space. So it might be better to zoom out a little bit to give uh, our objects plenty of breathing room in between the outer edges of the picture plane and their, and their contours. Um, but, you know, there's other things in there, other shapes that we need to pay attention to and how they relate to the edge of the picture plane as well. Got these cast shadows that extend out to the right. How do we want to fit these? How are they going to relate to the edge of the picture plane? Those objects sitting right on the edge of the picture plane, it can create some undesirable visual tension in those areas, pulling our uh, focus away from our main subject, pulling our eye over to the edge when we don't want the viewer to get stuck over there. Uh, we want them to focus on our, our main subject, right? So we don't want anything to, to pull their attention away from that. And we also need to pay attention to diagonals, right? Rectangles have these implied diagonals happening between the corners. 
we can see in, in my example here that we've got some light and shadow shapes created by the folds in the uh, sheet hanging back there that go right up into that corner. They follow along that diagonal. Uh, you know, that seems to be working out well. They're subtle. They're not super bright contrast like our subjects are. So they're not competing and pulling our attention away from our subjects as much. And they do kind of follow along that diagonal nicely, kind of draw our eye in to our main area of focus. So it's not too bad, but we want to keep that in mind as we develop the painting or drawing. If we make these light shapes too bright, create too much contrast, could pull our attention up out and away uh, from our subject out of the picture plane. We don't necessarily want the bottom edge of our, our ground plane to sit right on the bottom of the picture plane. That can kind of be awkward too. And so I want to give them a little more room. I've designated and marked off uh, halfway points, midpoints, as well as dividing that picture plane into thirds. You may be familiar with the rule of thirds. Sometimes placing objects along these uh, third lines can create a pleasing composition. So that's something that we might consider. Got that big, tall, vertical cylinder of the paper towel roll kind of close to the, the center. And if I were to move it over to one of these thirds lines, what would that do? Might need to move some of these objects around uh, to, to make that composition a little more balanced. The way I've currently got those objects placed, if we're scanning from the bottom up, right, we're hitting that uh, this vessel here first. So in the foreground, it's closer to us. The next thing we run into, it's continuing upward, run into the bottom of the sphere. It's a little bit further back in the space, so we get into kind of a middle ground. And continuing on, we, we run into that cylinder, which is the furthest back object. And then, of course, beyond that, we have the back edge of the table that my objects are sitting on. So it kind of creates this foreground, middle ground, background effect in just kind of a short uh, area vertically. Right? There's kind of this implied diagonal leading leading our eye back into the space. So think about those aspects when you're planning your composition. We don't necessarily have to fit the entirety of our objects in the picture plane, right? Say we wanted a little more of a cropped view of our subject. Um, we could move the viewfinder around to locate a good kind of nice cropping. So in this case here, you know, if we wanted to utilize uh, that rule, those rule of thirds, right? We see that bottom third, the top of that vessel is lining up with that. It's kind of nice paper towel roll here. If we line that up with this third, we could create a, a pleasing composition. Perhaps we could just move that sphere out of there, totally crop it out. Uh, if your arrangement isn't working, go ahead and, and try some different things out. Maybe we'll move that paper towel roll over to one of those thirds. Some overlap happening there. It can help us further create a sense of depth or space. If we line that roll of paper towels up along with this third here, this third division, perhaps at the same time line up that back edge of that, that table along uh, this bottom third here I could create a nice kind of pleasing composition. So the viewfinder is handy. We can use it to plan out our composition and make sure we've got a nice pleasing arrangement.